What is up guys, this is Dope is Jay bringing you guys another video. Sorry for my voice in this video, I'm having allergies right now, so I'm sound, gonna sound a little bit nasally in this video, sorry about that, but bear with me for this one because this is gonna be a very detailed and expansive video talking about the latest collaboration between NVIDIA and Intel, right? Which is very, very huge news and has broader implications within the tech industry and the semiconductor industry, right? So let's get into it, let's get into the details. NVIDIA buys $5 billion worth of Intel, right? So they're investing $5 billion at $23.28 per share, making NVIDIA one of the largest shareholders in Intel with a 4.9% stake in the total company, which is pretty big, right? Now, is it as much money as Intel needs? No, but it's still something to spark the partnership and allow this collaboration to happen, right? And recently, from looking at this at this news and seeing what happens what's happening with the intel share price as of recording they're above like 27 percent with their share price right now right so it climbed over 30 bucks per share i don't know what it's going to be in a couple of days but this is big news so i'm pretty sure that the the share price is going to continue to climb as more and more details of this collaboration comes out right but what do we know right now right they're trying to jointly develop multiple generations of consumer PC and data center products, right? So they're trying to use the best design teams of both companies to be able to make those products for both con um, consumer PCs and data center. And we know like Intel needs to be able to compete in not only just consumer products, but data center. They haven't been doing really, really good in the data center. Most recently, there was news about AMD overtaking Intel in data center with their CPUs, which is huge. Like. If we look at the past couple of decades of Intel's business, they were huge in the data center, right? So losing that market share, not only just from the consumer PC side, but the data center side to a company like AMD. And then you also have Nvidia, which has always dominated it from a GPU standpoint is insane, right? And Nvidia, Intel hasn't been performing as well as AMD or Nvidia, right? So seeing this collaboration is very, very interesting. And I can't wait to see how it's executed, right? now. The goal of this collaboration, like we said, is split into two verticals. One is integrating RTX GPUs from NVIDIA into Intel SOCs, right? And then the next one is custom x86 CPUs for NVIDIA to be integrated into NVIDIA's AI platform, right? Now, how, how is Intel going to benefit from this partnership and this collaboration, right, to develop all these products? Well, one, if they're able to execute on the needs of what NVIDIA wants or their products, right? And and having these SOCs, not only from the consumer PC standpoint, but also from the data center standpoint and AI development, right? They're going to be able to have their brand revitalized, right? As well as being able to recapture some of that mind share within the average consumer, right? Because their mind share has been on a decline for a very, very long time, right? And we can see that from the fact that they haven't been able to hit on a lot of their roadmaps of different products that they've announced, right? A lot of it has been delayed um, significantly. A lot of their recent architecture has have not been performing up to snuff compared to their competitors like AMD and NVIDIA, right? So they're, they're fighting a war on multiple fronts. And this isn't just like AMD and NVIDIA that they're competing against, right? We have other global semiconductor competitors rising to the market, making their own products that can compete within the data center and AI market, right? So it's, it's not just a domestic issue that they have to face, it's a global issue, right? So I think that Intel is going to be able to get under the hood of these RTX GPUs, understand the architecture and be able to take some notes and, and share it with their ARC team, right? And I've seen some very interesting takes for some people, especially on, on, on Twitter recently of like, oh, ARC is dead, ARC is dead, right? Like th this can potentially kill ARC. And I'm like, no, most recently earlier this year, Z3 Celestial GPUs, which is the next architecture after Battle Mage, right? Their new GPU architecture, right? Is entering pre-silicon validation stage, right? So. This is when the GPU design and architecture is being tested using software models and emulators, right? Like the architecture is there, it's done, right? So this was months ago. So we don't know where they're at right now, but we're pretty sure that they're they're very, very far in, in regards to the validation stage of Celestial, right? So, so yeah, like I said, Arc isn't dead. 
Arc is not dying. The GPU division at Intel has survived multiple waves of layoffs, right? If that team was going to be cut off and killed, you would have seen them gone a long time ago. They are remaining committed to making GPUs, dedicated GPUs, integrated graphics. Now, I think the integrated graphics is going to be shifted more towards Intel, but Arc is still going to be there. Like I said, a couple of months ago, it was confirmed that Intel's next generation celestial GPUs have already entered their pre-silicon validation stage, right? So don't don't be alarmed about all this doomer talk that you might see on Twitter and other comments of people saying Arc is dead. That is not confirmed. Arc is here to stay until further notice, okay? Now, I wanted to provide an update about the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 50 Super Series. We did a video dedicated talking about a lot of the specs. I talked about if you, if you should upgrade or not, so check out that video, right? It did really, really well. There has been a lot of people coming out saying, hey, Intel, well, not Intel, NVIDIA's RTX 50 Super Series GPUs might be canceled and stuff like that. As of recently, it was confirmed that they might be delayed, okay? So... We were looking at Q4 of this year. It might be pushed out into 2026, right? So, like I said, they're still coming. There's going to be a Blackwell refresh for Super GPUs coming out with increased VRAM capacity and VRAM speeds. Okay, so still be on the lookout for those. They're not they're not canceled, but they're potentially delayed, right? So we still have to wait for an official announcement from Nvidia about these GPUs coming out, but they're pretty much confirmed at this point right now, right? A lot of reliable leakers and sources around NVIDIA have already come out and leaked the full specs of these cars, right? So all we're waiting for right now is when are they going to be released, right? It's not canceled. That's not happening, right? Because like I mentioned in the previous video, you still have the looming threat of the RX 9080 XT from AMD to come out as well, okay? So there's still a looming threat of that. And you also have... um high-end battle mage well not high-end battle mage but a, a newer battle mage card that can compete anywhere from the 50 well not the 5070 the 5060 ti to the 5060 right so you still have that along the uh, uh, coming out as well so all right and in closing thank you guys for viewing the video thank you guys for all the support that you guys have been providing over these past couple of weeks of us being much more consistent with the uploads live streams shorts everything like that there's a lot more content coming down the pipeline so yeah thank you guys make sure you guys leave a like subscribe and let you let me know your thoughts on this topic and we're out